Hello, we are continuing with the inventory management series and in this lecture we are going to see what are the different kinds of inventories as well as the costs associated with it and what is EOQ. So beginning with the types of inventory regarding the process through which products are manufactured or stored, the first is input inventory. It's when product is received and sitting within at the beginning of the process prior to any kind of utilization or transformation stage. When it's in the midst of activities inside of a process, that's our in-process inventory, commonly known as work in process or work in progress. And output inventory are items that have been completed but have not left the barrier of the process, which means that we haven't uh, shipped it out of the process to the next to the next one. Uh, we knew from our previous video that uh, the purpose of inventory is to uncouple different rhythms. And that's the main role of inventory, as processes have different fluctuations. By having buffers, it allows process, processes to be slightly separated from one another, as also there is on every particular stage of a process a certain amount of inventory that is needed. So depending on the regularity and the pools of every flows along the supply chain, we are either going to allow inventories to build up if the process is running slow or if it is running fast, the amount of inventory is going to be small. Why managing inventories occupies an important place in supply chain management? Well, it is for four major reasons. And the first one, of course, is economy of scale. Um, for example, if we are planning to supply our warehouse with spare parts, uh, no matter how many items we buy, there is a fixed cost to ship that quantity uh, to our warehouse and store it. Therefore, if we can spread that fixed cost over that quantity, the individual cost per item goes down. And that's what we mean by uh, spreading fixed costs over a large production quantity. For production and capacity smoothing, uh, as demand fluctuates, and because we don't want to keep recruiting or laying off people or buying machines and then keeping them out of use for production and budget purposes, the inventory is meant to play a role of a smoother by allowing it to increase or decrease when demand fluctuates. Uh, if we take, for example, the cement industry, uh, there are some seasons where when the demand decreases and others where it increases for weather and uh, economic uh, conjecture factors. The strategy would be then to smooth production all throughout the year, allowing the inventory to adapt so, uh, so that we can meet that demand. The third reason is that we use inventory for stockout protection. Uh, it is simply when we use uh, extra inventory which serves as safety stock to avoid shortage so we can be always uh, able to deliver our clients and prevent us from stopping a process. And the last way we look at inventory is price speculation. If we observe that the price of the items we intend to buy is going to go up, we buy more of it now to prevent a cost later on. But uh, all of these uh, efficient uh, usages or rules of inventory come with a cost. And there are three main components to what we call the annual inventory total cost. The first, uh, of course, is cost to order. So every time we place uh, an order, there is a cost associated with it. The second, the second costs uh, are related to holding inventory. Some examples would be uh, building the warehouse uh, and in order to move uh, to hold and move and store materials we have to pay uh, to pay people and buy forklifts we have to pay insurance etc and the last is how much the inventory itself costs
Coming now to EOQ, which stands for Economic uh, Order Quantity, the question that this procedure is tackling consists on uh, saying that, basing on inventory costs, and in order to optimize those costs, how much quantity should we order. Thus, um, it helps to define the load size and gives us a good starting point with the aim to minimize the total cost of inventory system. The, the EOQ is a robust methodology. I mean that even if its assumptions are violated, uh, it remains a practical approach and gives us uh, an optimal solution in logistics and procurement fields. So in terms of the assumptions for EOQ, uh, the first one is uh, that we know exactly what our uh, demand for our products is going to be. But this is not a life uh, assumption, uh, as most of companies are forecasting their demand upon a certain horizon. They don't know exactly what their demand is going to be. Uh, our product demand uh, should also be constant. Uh, therefore, not only demand is known ahead of time, but it should also be constant. Uh, the second lead time uh, also should be known and constant. We also assume that uh, there are no discounts given for bulk ordering, uh, so there is only one price regardless of our uh, order size. And also that all of our replenishment orders received from our suppliers are received in a lump sum so that if we order a thousand units to receive the they uh, essentially uh, deliver exactly a thousand units and now to be able to go ahead and express that equation of uq let's first see the costs we are trying to model So first there is of course holding cost. Uh, as we have seen previously, it comprises all of the handling aspects when it comes to storing, paying insurance, electricity, uh, sometimes a certain climate control is required to keep the products in a good quality. The second one is ordering cost. Uh, it is a fixed cost which is independent from any other variables related to uh, related to quantity or handling. What that means is basically we have to pay transportation, administrative costs and labor. On the last two costs we have the shortage cost. The risk of running out of stocks may uh, cause a loss of uh, in, in terms of sales, loss of credibility perceived by our client, replacement costs. Uh, it's when we have to afford expedited costs uh, by air shipping overnight express mail to the customer uh, in order to make up for his eventual losses. Or sometimes we have absolutely to replace the product. And finally we have the purchase costs uh, where the price per unit may vary uh, very slightly in terms of bulk discounts. It's simply when we buy high volume the price per unit goes down. For the variables, uh, if the assumptions for uh, the EOQ hold true, the purchase cost, which we assume is constant, and the shortage cost drop out of the total uh, of the total cost equation. Because demand and lead time both are known and constant in advance, uh, we can plan a system so we will never run out of material. So the variables we are trying, we are, we are using in calculating the OQ. Sometimes you will have uh, different letters for these, but for this uh, lecture we are uh, going to suppose that uh, D goes for demand, H uh, for holding cost per unit, S as ordering cost, and Q for our order size, which describe, which describes also uh, EOQ. Our total uh, cost equation is uh, is going to be uh, a Q divided by two, which represents our average inventory, inv inventory times H. 
the cost of holding one unit of inventory. So the left half uh, Q divided by 2 multiplied by H is our annual holding cost and then the right hand side will be our demand divided by uh, our order quantity which is going to tell us how uh, many orders we have to place per year times S which is our ordering cost so the right hand side would be the total ordering cost for the year but note that uh, the units of uh, measure for D and H have to be identical So as we can see, our total cost equation have two components, holding cost and shortage cost. To be able to decide the value of Q, let's graph the two competing types of costs, which are holding cost and ordering cost. As the order size increases, the average order inventory increases proportionately, so our inventory holding cost increase in a linear trend. On the other hand, uh, with less uh, frequent order placement, our ordering cost spread over a larger quantity and that is dependent on how many items we are ordering at once. And that's how that curve goes down. If we add those two costs together, we'll get the yellow uh, total cost line. Uh, now, there, uh, there's something interesting happens, if you notice it. The lowest point of that total cost curves at the same point where the uh, ordering cost is equal to the holding cost. So when that, uh, when that happens we actually calculate a value for Q to find out what that quantity is. To minimize the total cost all we have to do is uh, to set the ordering cost equal to the holding cost. So the formula here will be 2 times our ordering cost times our annual demand divided by our holding cost. In our next video we we are going to try to come with um, simple exercises so we can understand more what is EOQ and we are also going to talk about uh, reorder point policy. Thank you and see you then.